All right, post bar scope part three. After that last video, I felt like I need to add this one to the series. This should be the last thing you need to complete the original aim of these videos. All right, this is a fresh project. And much like before, let's go to project settings to turn on the stencil set, stencil dot. Let's search stencil. There we go. All right. It's done with that. And then, much like before, I'm going to create a folder for this demo. All right. Then some subfolder just to keep it organized. Okay. All right, order scope and I need uh, one for the material. Material and I need another folder for uh, the material with the translucency or the masking that the needs. All right, all right. I need to go to the finder, download the file. I put it in the description. Just copy that and. Now, I need to import the scopes, the meshes for the scopes. Just gonna go to the folder that I created. Go back there and import the FBX files. This doesn't matter, just import all. Okay, just first I'm gonna check the mesh. First. All right. All right. Um, check the mask excluder mesh. Just checking it if it's imported correctly. All right, correctly. Just like before, we're we're using the assets we used from previous videos. All right. Next for the site mesh. Just gonna add the socket for the uh, mask mask mesh to uh, attach to. All right. Uh, all right. There we go. Just name it BB excludes sockets. I'm gonna. Okay. All right, just put in the exclude mesh, just gonna position it correctly. It's not good. Change that. All right, this should be good. And then we should be good here. Next, we need to I need to go to the uh, character blueprint, first person. Yeah. Okay, much like in the previous video, we need to add stat the static meshes for both of the meshes we just imported. First, then attach that to the camera. I'm just positioning the camera so just correctly. Name that to scope mesh. Then I'll add another static mesh for the masker mesh, I guess. Excluder. Alright, just assign the mesh we imported one for the scope. And and another one for the 
excluder mask mesh. Just put the socket, the one we created earlier. Okay, that's correct. Now I'm positioning the scope so it's correctly positioned so we can see it on the camera as so we're looking down on it. That's good. Just position this down so we can see it clearly in action. Alright, that's good. Right, let me just check it. Yeah, that's good. Alright, next we need to change the render settings for the masker. Mask mesh. Let's put the custom depths. Yes, correct. Check that one. And then I need to do the same for the render. Under main pass and render depth pass, both needs to be unchecked. Alright, it should be all we need for those settings. And let me just check it if stencil is working correctly. I'm just unpossessed. There we go. Yeah. All good. Okay, next. Alright, we need. Um. Okay. Alright. Let me just open the materials I copied earlier. Material. Okay. Yeah, let's open this. And we need something here. We need the. A group of nodes that identifies the, the stencil on the screen. But for now, I'll create another material. Let me just, yeah, just organize this first. Let's put that in the material plant folder. And another one needs great, uh, save that first. Alright, we need to create a new material, uh, specifically for masking the inside of the scope. Yeah, I'll just name it appropriately. Just scope. That's good. Alright. Alright, let's go to the old material. And I'm copying uh I'm copying this group of nodes, these. This will these will identify uh the part of the screen that needs uh that has the correct stencil applied. All right, so we need uh, two more things. We need a, a scene depth set with uh, the custom depth as its ID, so the texture ID. Then we need another node called a pixel depth. And we need another node or need a constant parameter, just one, set the value as one. Yeah. All right, good there. Next, we need to mask this custom depth node with just the R checked. Perfect. Then, from that, we need a linear interpolate nodes with uh, the this section connects to the alpha, and then from the custom depth node mask, we need to connect that to B, and uh, we should keep A at zero. All right. Then we need an if nodes 
we need to connect the pixel depth at A, connect the linear interpreter to B. Just setting this correctly. And next thing we need to do. Let me just check. Need two constant parameters or no not parameter, just constant, zero and one. Let's put it this one. Okay. Need zero at A less than B. And connect the rest of the pins to constant value one. Alright. Next, after that, we just, just need multiply nodes. Then connect the if node. Just shrink this up. So it's organized. Connect the if node to B, and yeah, we should be good. And connect that to the output. And we should be good here. Okay. Here. Okay, next with that material function done. Okay, we need to make the actual material for the uh, translucency inside scope. Just, just gonna name it uh, probably M scope translucency interior scope interior translucency. Right. Next, uh, we need to set the blend mode to translucent. Then I think we need a uh, just checking should be good. We need a scalar parameter. Scalar parameter and name it stencil mask bits and. Put this default value at one, the one we set for the uh, PP masker earlier. Yeah, there we go, one. And then we need a material call function, material function call. I think. Yeah, material function call. And set it to the one we just created for the masking. There we go. And okay, that's not right. There should be an input. Okay, let's check. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, we need an input parameter or input node. Just input. Then set this to scalar value, and I'm just gonna put the name as a bit or something. Bit stencil, I guess. And then put connect that to the bit mask, and we should be good there. Then just from here, just connect that to opacity. Then connect the parameter to the input we created. All right, should be good for the material. And okay, last thing we need to do is set uh, just for this demo, just for demonstration. I'm setting the all the materials in the scope as the material we created for the translucency. I'll explain earlier how you get why this is not uh, why I did it this way, but uh, there are additional stuff you need to do for this. But for the results, there you go. If you've seen the final moments of that part, you were already asking why the scope doesn't uh, look right in this next part we will address those concerns all right i'm hopping on to blender to show it to you all right for the mesh what you need to do is uh, create slots specifically uh, so you can hide them when aiming down sights as you can see here i created specific slots for uh, i named it translucency 
this so I know uh, what they are. And these are the parts that's only visible uh, when you're aiming down sights. And for the rest, it becomes uh, quote unquote maskable with the uh, stencil mask that uh, we have been using all this time. Now I'm hopping onto Unreal to show you the implementation of the rest. And these are the names for the slots, material slots that you need to change. For here, I'm going to the blueprint to set, show you the general implementation. This first part, uh, takes the original values of the materials for the mesh. And then we need that because you need to set them to their original value later when you don't, you're not aiming down sight. And in this section, we change the materials in the scope mesh with the translucent material we created earlier, making it so the interior of the scope can be masked with the mask mesh. Okay, to show you in, in action, there you go. I'm just changing it, and yeah, there we go. And it's masking the inside of the mesh uh, with the uh, back of the scope still uh, looking correct. Uh, the thing about this though is uh, you need to make sure that it only activates when the player is looking inside the mesh. That's the one thing you need to keep in mind when using this method. And as you can see, I'll just show you. It's also... And with that, you should have all the tools and knowledge you need to create uh, scopes like in the newer Modern Warfare games. Here I'm showing the best case implementations of this method. The parallax effect, I implemented that after, but uh, you should be able to figure that out yourself. This, as far as I know, is the closest we can get uh, to imitating how they utilize or implement scopes in modern warfare the main goal of these series of videos has always been to provide an alternate solution to dual render scopes while still getting the desired effect from them i hope that i achieved that goal mm -hmm.